In this video, I'm going to explain the relationship between forces and moments. First, let's quickly define what a moment is. A moment, also known as a torque, is a twisting force that causes a rotating tendency. Mathematically speaking, a moment about a point on an object is the force applied to that object times the perpendicular distance to that point. Keyword here, perpendicular. Consider this bar here. We have a hockey stick shaped bar attached to a wall at point O. If we apply forces shown, it'll cause a clockwise moment about the origin, point O. That is, the bar will want to rotate clockwise. The magnitude of the moment is the force times this distance here, because that is the distance from the origin to the force that's perpendicular to the force. It has nothing to do with this distance here, because it is not perpendicular to the force F. Now, if we apply the force here, for instance, it would also have a clockwise moment, or torque. But this time, it'll be F times this distance here, because this is the perpendicular distance from O to F. If you apply the force here, the perpendicular distance is still this, but this time, you have a counterclockwise moment. And if you apply the force here, well, you get the point. Now here's where things get interesting. Let's take this in a 3D. Let's consider a fire hydrant. In order for the firefighters to attach a hose to it, they first have to remove a cap. To do this, they use a wrench with distance R, and they apply a force F by stepping on the end of the wrench to overcome the torque on the cap. Now what if the cap is too tight and the firefighter cannot generate enough torque to unscrew it? Well, since we know that the moment is equal to the distance times the force, he can do one of two things. He can increase F by getting a heavier firefighter to apply a force to the wrench, therefore increasing M. Or he can increase R by attaching a cheater bar to the wrench, which will also increase M. Now let's formalize our representation of the moment as a vector by writing it as m equals r cross f. That is, the cross product of r and f. If you aren't comfortable with cross products, I've made a video about how to calculate cross products, and I'll link it here. It's important to remember that the moment is always r cross f, and never f cross r. r always comes first. Now as a vector, we're gonna represent f this way, so that the vectors are tip to tail. That is, the tip of the first vector r, touches the tail of the second vector, f. This will come in handy for visualizing the moment when using the right hand rule. But back to the cross product. What does r cross f actually give us? Well, it gives us the moment vector, which tells us two things. First, it gives us the axis around which the wrench spins. Second, it gives us information to get the magnitude of the moment. So for this example, let's say we apply a force of 50 pounds to the wrench. We'll write it as negative 50k, because it's a downward force on the z axis. In coordinates, it would be 0, 0, negative 50. And let's say the wrench is 3 feet long. We'll write it as 3i because it lies on the positive x-axis. And as coordinates, it would be 3, 0, 0. Taking r cross f, we would get our moment, 0, 150, 0. As you can see, the answer only has a y component. Since the moment is in the y-axis, that is, the wrench spins in the y-axis, we would write our moment this way, 150j pounds foot. And the magnitude would just be 150 pounds foot. We can use the right hand rule to confirm that the moment is indeed in the y-axis. By pointing the four fingers of your right hand from the cap in the direction of R, then curling your fingers down towards F, your thumb should be pointing in the direction of the moment vector, which should be along the positive y-axis. 